Hello, everyone. Welcome to our next session, Apps Script and the Sheets Macro Recorder. My name is Mary Lesbrill. I'm a cloud customer engineer at Google. I'm joined by Stephanie, also a cloud customer engineer. Matt Powers, he's a senior consultant at MavenWave. And Ted Bradley, he's a product manager at Google. For today's agenda, I'm going to start us off with recorded macros, a new feature in Sheets. Then we're going to do a deeper dive into AppScript. So Stephanie is going to present an overview on what AppScript is and highlight some use cases on how you can start using it in your businesses. We're also going to highlight some companies that are currently using AppScript today to transform and enhance their business processes. Matt's going to do a, dem a demo of an application built almost entirely in AppScript. And then last but not least, Ted's going to share with us some new features as well as a roadmap to see what's ahead for Google Apps Script. For recorded macros, we all know that spreadsheets are a core part to a business today in getting things done. We can think about probably all departments in one way or another are using spreadsheets every single day. From our perspective, considering the amount of time that we're all individually spending in, in spreadsheets, we, uh, the goal of recorded macros is to start eliminating some of these, automa these repeatable tasks that we could easily automate away. So you can think about spending more time doing a complex analysis instead of spending time formatting that chart over and over again. So this April, to try and reduce some of, that, some of those repeatable tasks that we can automate away, we launched Record a Macro. It's a cloud-based feature which um, it's a cloud-based feature which will record your tasks automatically and write them to App Script. So when you can think about using it when you're doing the same formatting on a tab over and over again, or when you're performing some sort of analysis on similar data sets. We know we get this data weekly, monthly, for example, and we're performing the same task over and over again. This can add up to hours of time wasted for doing something that could easily be automated away using Record a Macro. So when you use Record a Macro, once you record it, you can play it back on demand without having to write any code. You can also, you can also create a more complex macro by recording the macro, going into the app script in the background, and then adding some more app script code into it to creating a more advanced complex macro, macro and saving even more time for you. I'm going to queue up a quick demo to show you how you can do this today in Cheats. OK, so imagine we all get this spreadsheet, and we're probably doing the same formatting. For example, this is a quarterly sales report. And I'm going to do some formatting on it that I constantly do on a regular basis. I'm going to go into Tools, Macros, Record a Macro to initialize it. And as you can see, it's already recording all of my actions on the sheet. So I'm going to do some things that I typically do in this spreadsheet, such as bold the row. I'm going to clean up this sales data and add currency to make it look like um, an actual currency value. Doing things like cleaning up that date. And then let's do some more things, like freezing that first row, creating a filter on it. And then let's clean this up to make it a little more readable. OK, once done, I'm just going to hit Save and call this macro something like Format Demo. You can also assign it a hotkey, so when you want to run it again, you could just use the hotkey. We'll save it. Now it's writing to App Script in the background. And then let's try redoing this on the Q2 sales sheet. So I'm going to go into Tools, Macros, hit that Format Demo. As you can see, it's just going to go through all of those tasks that I've been running already, and it's eliminating this manual work for me. Another thing I can do is, some, let's say I like to perform the same analysis over and over. So I'm going to go into Tools, Macros, record that macro, and then let's do something like create a bar chart. Aggregate column D. All right, now I've got my bar chart. And then I'm sure we all are used to creating pivot tables. So let's do data, pivot table. Let's make that row stores. And then let's add the value to the sales for that store. So I'm going to save this once again. We'll call this analysis demo. And 
and it just saved. And then let's run this again on Q2. So I'm gonna go into tools, macros, perform that analysis. As you can see, it's just going over the exact actions that I've done and creating that bar chart for me as well as that pivot table. So you could start using this um, as quickly as just recording something, but then also you can go into the app script in the background And as you can see, these were all the actions that were recorded um, in the app script itself, that format demo, as well as the analysis macro. So you can always go in and add some more code and make, create a more complex macro behind it. Can we switch back to the slides? Okay, and now Stephanie's gonna highlight a more in-depth overview on app script. Thank you so much, Mary, for showing us just how exciting and impactful the Sheets macro recorder is and how it actually utilizes App Script under the covers. So I'm actually here to just talk more about um, what App Script actually is. Sorry, let me just fix this. So App Script is actually a serverless developer platform that's used um, for integrating, extending, and automating G Suite applications and it allows you to build line of business applications very easily and quickly. It's actually including a built-in tech stack utilizing JavaScript so that there's no need to learn a new language or build and manage and invest in another tech stack. So that means that your team can get up and running much faster and you don't have to invest in a new tech stack. And just to illustrate just how impactful AppScript is in the industry today, we actually have 3.3 billion weekly executions, 8.7 weekly end users, 27,000 weekly active domains, and 27,000 weekly active domains, and 270,000 weekly developers. AppScript allows you to integrate with over 30 plus G Suite and Google services and APIs in addition, it also allows you to have access to additional utility services. So your developer teams can actually access G Suite and non-G Suite services, including Google Maps, um, Google Analytics, YouTube, and several GCP APIs. For example, Cloud SQL. So this really allows you to enable rapid development, including integrated monitoring and a very generous quota system, so you can reduce overhead costs. And this allows you to increase productivity and efficiency. It opens the doorway for your developer teams to spark innovation while reducing IT costs. Both professional and novice developers alike can create business critical applications while reducing and not dealing with the complexity of IT traditional systems costs. As I mentioned, it enables you rapid development with integrated monitoring and, and a generous quota system. And I'll go into some examples of how our customers are really reducing overhead costs in just a moment. With AppScript, you can actually build add-ons, for example, mini applications that live within G Suite and can be consumed either internally or deployed directly to the G Suite marketplace for public consumption and to reach new customers. You can also build and deploy scaled web applications so that you can use them internally or use for public access. And you can also extend G Suite applications and include an agent that will respond to and take action on changes that happen within G Suite with you, without you actually having to lift a finger. As I mentioned, you have access to 30 plus G Suite and Google services and APIs plus utility services. And so that actually is something that allows you to increase efficiency, but we're actually constantly adding additional uh, services that benefit the user. In addition, we, you also have uh, built-in OAuth management, so you can get up and running very quickly without having to worry about your OAuth token requests or storage because all of that is handled for you automatically. Events can also be sent to and queried by applications that are running in traditional tech stacks meaning that you can build more intelligent applications that integrate with and extend G Suite applications and take action and respond to changes so that you can actually build in background automations. So with AppScript, the code that you write in AppScript is actually utilizing JavaScript, as I mentioned. It includes a sandboxed interpreter. And all of that code is actually being run in the cloud, not your browser. The only thing that you're doing in the browser is writing your code. 
So that means that you can get up and running quickly with fast and reliable execution. The Cloud IDE means that you have a code editor for you to deploy your scripts and deploy them directly to the G Suite marketplace for consumption. You also have a dashboard that allows your developers to have a launch pad for you to access your projects or do things like monitoring and troubleshooting. With the CLI, you have a command line interface for you to run and deploy your scripts and also do things like local development and version control. So now that I talked a little bit more about what AppScript is, I'd love to highlight a couple of our key customer examples that are leveraging AppScript today. Our top three use cases include enterprise workflows, resource management, and automation and integration. The customer examples that I'm going to highlight should highlight and really add color to these three use cases. So our first customer is Whirlpool Corporation. They are an American multinational company that manufactures and markets home appliances. This Fortune 500 company has more than 70 plus technology research centers and manufacturing centers around the world. Their account managers usually need to review open order reports that are generated in SAP. This information is essential for their account managers before they engage with their trade partners. So prior to utilizing AppScript, they had SAP write this open order information into their notes database. And then their account managers would have to go into SAP, log in, and download these reports via Excel. So now AppScript actually does three things. It has SAP send the outstanding order reports and information as a CSV attachment to a dedicated Gmail service account. That dedicated service account processes who the correct account manager recipient should be. And then it converts the CSV document into a Google Sheet and gives the recipient the correct share permissions so they have immediate access to that report. So AppScript provides them with reliability. It showcases how AppScript can be integrated with an enterprise system like SAP and a G Suite, which is a highly co collaborative productivity suite. And now their business is more efficient. The sheet is delivered directly to their account managers. They don't have to manually log into SAP anymore and download the reports. Now 200 account managers receive these emails. The information is essential prior to engaging with trade managers. And it contains millions of dollars worth of product ordered, not yet received. One other use case at Whirlpool Corporation is for tracking field call rates for their parts. Prior, root cause analysis for these field calls were very time consuming and required a manual reading of their calls. Given they're running on G Suite, their analyst team decided to use AppScript to use a web application that launched a dashboard and gives them this information on the fly, which was much more automated, faster, and easy to consume. So you can see here, AppScript is, using, uh, is being used to build an HTML service that launches this web app. It manages all of the user data in JSON hosted in Google Drive. It also manages all data gathering from Google Drive as well. And you can see here, it's being used to power this heat map showing their field call rates corresponding to the parts and various issues that might be found. They could have built this in many different ways, but they chose AppScript for a number of reasons. It's ease of use, it's built-in development platform and tools, built-in user authentication, and the user data is hosted in G Suite. Now this tool is being used by over 120 users across North America. It's, most one, of, it's one of their most highly used cross-functional tools. And it reduced analysis from four to six hours to five to 10 minutes, which is pretty impressive. And now it's being used in their leadership meetings to investigate customer issues and progress on the fly. Daniel A. Marshall, their senior quality analyst, has said that AppScript has lowered the barrier of entry for us to do new and exciting things at little cost with a speed that shatters system, uh, previous systems implementations. Now, PwC is a multinational professional services network headquartered in London. It's one of the largest professional services firms in the world. PwC Australia is working on a project that enables their employees to quickly locate the correct document template to use with their clients. The solution provides a simple wizard, collaboration via Google Docs, and a simple transition to Gmail so that they can send the document to the client. 
This solution has two parts. The first part is a published web application that presents the user with a custom form that they fill out to give to the right person, the, the client, using a template. It uses a Google Sheet as a data backend. And once the user uh, fills out a form, AppScript is used to produce a Google Doc template. And it land, lands in the user's MyDrive so they can start collaborating in the document. The second part is an add-on that shows up as a side panel when the Google Doc is created. And that gives them instructions on how to fill out the template. And it includes a button that actually publishes all the contents of the Google Doc into the body of an email. Now, as I mentioned, this is actually moving the entire contents of the, the document into the email, which really streamlines their client interactions because they no longer have to open an attachment. And they're using integrated APIs that actually push the email directly into the user's inbox drafts folder. This is really powerful because AppScript has enabled them to do much more complex formatting than what's normally achievable in Gmail. Now with AppScript, they have um, built-in integrations with Google Docs and Gmail, so their client-facing employees now can centrally collaborate in a Google Doc, and it's really furthered their goal as a company to digitize the firm. Michael Benz, their Google technical, cloud technical solutions engineer, has said that the end result is our employees start engagements using G Suite, and AppScript gave us the ability to hit the ground running. Air Liquid is a French multinational company which supplies industrial gases and services to various industries, and their goal was to improve the safety on their grounds, on the factory grounds. And they needed to do risk analysis of their facilities by collecting risk assessment data. And then the resulting action plans would help them better comply with their internal safety standards. They needed to build an application to help keep track of these risk assessments while still using their existing IT infrastructure and tools. So they built it using AppScript, which produces the HTML and CSS, and fetches the risk assessment data from a set of Google Sheets. And depending on the user and language, that app gives them the questionnaire to fill out about risk assessment. So you can see here on the left, the HTML service generates a questionnaire out of Google Sheets. The app pulls the data from the questionnaires, and it adds it to a dashboard. And they actually use the Google Visualization API to help with graphing and charts. Different Google Drive folders contain staging versus production sets of sheets and scripts. And then on the right-hand side, even when safety and risk assessments change and there's progression, they can actually visualize that in the dashboard over here and monitor it on several levels. Now, on multiple company levels, Air Liquid Management has a constant insight into how far the factories are getting matured in their safety assessments. So they chose AppScript for a number of reasons. Once again, they had limited budget, but they were able to get from presenting the problem to an actual working application within four months. And since they're all on G Suite, everything was included. They didn't need any IT safety procedures. Everything was immediately um, in the application by using Google Sheets as a data backend and they had built-in user authentication with Google accounts. The huge advantage for them was being able to implement and deploy feedback from management and end users on the fly, and now they have 850 registered users and 300 monitored facilities. Dennis Van Lemmeren, their industrial management system specialist, has said that rapid app script development has enabled us to improve local industrial risk awareness and mitigation, and management now has the necessary information to focus resources. Now, the examples I just talked about were all internal use cases to increase productivity, but I did want to highlight a company who's using AppScript to create a new tool to reach new customers on the G Suite marketplace. Smartsheet is a SaaS company, an application, that enables you to add emails and attachments directly to a specific row, and that's all used to manage project progress, manage calendars, share documents. And what they created is the Smartsheet for Gmail add-on which enables you to add emails and attachments directly to a specific, specific row in a sheet so that pertinent information about your project stays in the context of what you're doing rather than getting buried in your inbox. Now they have almost 600,000 installs and 8.2 million users, which is one of the highest number of users of all the listed applications on the G Suite marketplace. <laughs> A lot of times, important decisions are made or approved over email, and record of that decision lives in your email. And having to store and track down the approvals every time it needs to be referenced is very time consuming and error prone. So now when you get an approval, you can stay in your inbox and use this add-on to add the contents of the email or any attachments to the applicable row in your Smartsheet. 
Now everyone working on that sheet can quickly reference it in real time, and it makes it possible for you to increase execution and productivity. So Casey Bryson, who's the CIO of one of their key customers from Hurley Medical Center, is working on a project um, for public health initiatives in response to the Flint water crisis. And they're using the add-on, and he said that with the Smartsheet for Gmail add-on, we have increased execution speed because users can stay in Gmail and easily attach emails to an applicable row in Smartsheet. Also, everyone working from that sheet can quickly reference it instead of searching for an inbox um, or trying to track, down, track it down from a teammate. So hopefully you got a great idea of all the enterprise use cases that AppScript can enable you to do, along with how you can create tools to reach new customers on the G Suite marketplace. Now I'm going to pass it off to Matt from Mavenwave, who helped us work on a tool together, a uh, people skills demo that we built together at Google. Awesome. Thank you, Stephanie. I think that was a really good overview of the different types of things that you can do with AppScript. Uh, as Stephanie mentioned, uh, something we're going to demo here is uh, an application or a process that we built, the four of us, um, and it was around a, a people skills use case. So something that you know, we've seen internally uh, at our group and something that you know, in our previous jobs we, we've seen other corporations struggle with is how do you keep track of the different skill sets that are within your organization? Um, so up here we just kind of have a fun graphic of just a small portion of the different uh, GCP products that are out there. Uh, and then you extrapolate you know, the different programming languages, the different um, you know, marketing skill sets that people can have, and trying to understand you know, what skill sets, uh, what knowledge bases are within your company uh, as both you know, technology grows and the, the amount of you know, different skill sets that people can have grows uh, is becoming a bigger and bigger challenge for companies. Um, so we thought it'd be something, an interesting uh, demo for, for this presentation and um, to basically look at our, how can AppScript and I'll show a little bit of AppMaker, how can AppScript and AppMaker uh, solve at least a small part of this challenge? So we wanted a solution that really had three key pieces of functionality. Uh, so we wanted to take an inventory of any new employee that joins an organization, what is their skill set? We wanted to then organize that inventory in an easy, easy to grab, easy to digest way. We then wanted to integrate that inventory in uh, interesting and meaningful ways, and we'll show uh, we, what we think is a cool use case of that. Uh, and the end result, so, you know, kind of jump into the end before I get to the demo, but um, we use AppScript to integrate seven different G Suite applications and services, uh, and really is, you know, the four of us working two weeks part-time to put this process together, and we think we got to a pretty good uh, um, minimum viable product. So with that, could we turn it over to the uh, demo? Um... Ted, what is your password? <laughs> awesome. All right, so this is a fictitious uh, company, Organic Villa. Uh, I'm a new employee. I've just started. Um, and right off the bat, I'm going to get a Google form asking me for um, my skill set. So again, this is an, an exhaustive list of all the skills that you know you'd want to gather. But just for demo purposes, let's say you know I've got app application development and machine learning skills. You know, and I want to learn a little bit more about algorithms. App Maker, hopefully, I know because I'm talking about it today. And then uh, business analytics. So I'll submit this form, and then a few things are going to happen after I submit this form. There we go. So based on what I said in the Google form, I said I know a little bit about machine learning and a little bit about application development. And using AppScript, we actually automatically, we, we automatically did a few things. Uh, the first thing we did is we sent an email saying, hey, looks like you know machine learning. Here's a Google calendar of our machine learning group for different meetups in the, you know, the organization. Please add this to your calendar if you're you know, interested uh, in attending. 
uh, the second thing that automatically happened based off that only based off that initial Google form is you can now see that I'm part of a app dev and a machine learning user group. So instead of you know having the form filled out and it goes to some some type of admin who then you know needs to add them to user groups and needs to populate a backend database, this is now all done automatically using AppScript. So let's refresh this here. That is my app. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, so this is the second part. So a user's joined an organization, they have a Google form. Now this second piece, this is AppMaker. This is where you can um, constantly update any new skills you get. So you can see based on the initial survey, I said I have application development and machine learning skills. And then I came back at some other point uh, throughout the, you know, term or uh, duration of while I was at this organization, I said I have cloud SQL skills. There's just SQL skills. So now, you know, if I gain, let's say, business analytics skills, and the internet connection is good, there we go. Uh, it will populate in the skills, um, the skills list here. So that's the first part of it. And then I think uh, we were talking earlier about, you know, what's a useful way to serve this inventory to the rest of your organization? And that's an, the second piece of what AppMaker can offer. So let's say, you know, I want to find other people that know machine learning because I have a big machine learning project. So I'll click on this machine learning drop down, and I can see everyone in my organization who at some point either in this application or in the initial Google form has said they know machine learning. So I can click on um, Mikhail here. And it looks like Mikhail's got a few different skills. So he says he knows Python, machine learning, uh, project management, and SQL. And I can then, let's say I work with Mikhail, I say, you know, it looks like he has machine learning, uh, machine learning skill set, and I want, to, I want to work with him on a project. I can then endorse him after I've worked with him. You know, he says he knows machine learning. I worked with him. He definitely does. And I can endorse him uh, for that skill set. So, you know, it's one thing to say you know these skills, but then uh, as you work with other people in your organization, they can endorse you for that skill set, and it kind of uh, validates that they, they know what they're talking about. The last piece of, let me refresh this, make sure it's up to date. Yeah, so the last piece of functionality I want to talk about is now we have this underlying database of everyone in your organization, the different skill sets they have. What are some other useful ways we can service that information? So one, we showed AppMaker and you know how you can search for people with other skill sets. You can endorse them. But I think there, you know, once you have that that inventory of skills, there's some other things you can do. So here's just an example of, uh, you know, it's titled meeting notes, but you can think of this as some type of proposal or RFP that's out there. And you know, if we look at this, okay, machine learning has come up. So I can, you know, I see, okay, machine learning. I don't know anything about machine learning. Let's see if anyone in my organization does. So what we did again with AppScript is. We created a Google Doc add-on where you could search for people that have different skill sets. So I need to find someone that knows machine learning because this is a proposal that you know gets needs to get out tomorrow, next week, whatever it may be. Um, I've already used Mikhail, so let's go with Steven. So when I click on Steven here, um, a few things are going to happen. I'm going to write him a note. So say, hey, Steven um, or Stefan, uh, could you take a look at this? A proposal, take a look at section, you know, the first paragraph. I'll write him a little message here and I'll click OK. And then again, using App Script, two automated things are going to happen. Uh, one, he's going to get an email with that message, and then a second email sharing this document with him. So, just a really efficient way to uh, find you know, different skill sets in your organization. I think some other branches or some other things you could do with this, this inventory, especially at companies of larger sizes is start forecasting, you know, I know that, um, you know, we're, we're at a Google conference, so let's say, you know, I know TensorFlow is going to be big the next three to five years. I want to know how many people in my organization actually know TensorFlow. And then from an HR standpoint, say, you know, this is a skill set we're going to need to go out and find. Um, and that's, th that, those insights are all really only possible by having an underlying database that collects all this information. So switching back over to the slides now. 
So just jumping a little bit into the architecture. So I showed a new employee joining Organic Villa, our fictitious uh, company. The initial Google form collects those skill sets. Uh, and then it's going to do a few things automatically, like I showed. It's going to add them to the Google groups based on what they said their skills uh, were. Uh, they're going to get an email um, linking them to the Google Calendar associated with that group. Uh, and again, the, all of that information is pushed to Cloud SQL database. The Cloud SQL database acts as the back end for AppMaker. Uh, so AppMaker, again, where you can search for skills and add new skills, uh, there's a, a bi-directional um, uh, connection there between Cloud SQL and AppMaker. And then finally, our Google Doc add-on. So Cloud SQL, again, is the back end for that uh, Google Doc add-on where you can, you know, um, see other people's skills and add them to a Google Doc. So just to tie it all together, um, all these blue arrows you're seeing are app scripts. So this, this entire process, the, 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 glue, the glue of the process was app script. Um, so that, that's the first point. The second point being, you know, this took the four of us two, two and a half weeks of part-time work, and we feel like we got to a pretty, pretty good minimum viable product. Um, so uh, just highlighting, you know, this stuff is pretty easy to use and um, the connections between all these different G Suite products is fairly simple. Um, so yeah, a, a good, a good uh, demo to highlight, I think. So with that being said, I'm going to turn over to Ted to talk a little bit more about the roadmap and um, some other cool stuff coming down the pipeline with AppScript. Yep. Thanks so much, Stephanie, for uh, sharing some example use cases of how top organizations are using AppScript. And thanks, Matt, for that great overview, deep dive on how easy it is to use AppScript for internal use cases. I'm Ted Bradley. I'm the product manager for AppScript. Excited to share with you guys today uh, some of the improvements we've made to the product over the last 12 months, and also share with you a roadmap of what's to come. So first off, at the backbone of AppScript are the APIs and the events. And this is really what enables you to create applications that are more powerful and more intelligent. We're always looking for opportunities to expand the features that are available in these APIs and these events. And to that end, we've actually introduced 150 new methods over the last 12 months in uh, Sheets, Gmail, Google Groups, Calendar, and uh, Google Slides. We've also introduced a new event in uh, Google Calendar so that your applications can get, can get pinged every time a user's uh, introduces a new uh, meeting or updates an existing meeting. Additionally, um, Stephanie mentioned that you can create three things with AppScript. You can create web applications, automations, and add-ons. Um, and uh, you know, add-ons are essentially these mini applications that live inside of G Suite apps. And when the platform initially launched, we supported uh, Google Docs add-ons, Google Sheets add-ons, and Google Forms add-ons. However, late last year, we also introduced the ability to create add-ons for Gmail and Google Slides. And this year already, we have uh, released the ability to create uh, Google Calendar add-ons and also uh, hang out chatbots with AppScript. One of our top priorities is making sure that when you create applications on AppScript, they're both secure and enterprise ready. And part of enterprise ready means that it's manageable in the Google Admin Console. So to that end, we have a number of new features. First off, fine-grained OAuth scopes. So what this means is that essentially when an application is requesting access to the data of one of the users in your organization, it's going to ask for the absolute limited amount of data access that it needs to perform the action at hand. So an example is, instead of asking for access to an entire user's email inbox, we now have a fine-grained scope such that an application will access just the information for a specific email and for a finite expiring amount of time, meaning that your, data, your organization's data st uh, stays uh, safer. Additionally, we're working on a project called Manage, Project, uh, Manage Projects, which means that the cloud, Google Cloud projects behind each app script is actually going to, be, going to be brought into the domain policies so it can be managed along with all the policies of the other Google uh, Cloud projects as well. And we are very excited to announce today that we're launching a brand new feature called OAuth whitelisting for app script. OAuth whitelisting is actually an existing tool within the Google Admin Console. It's a very powerful tool for, admin, for OAuth management. However, we're launching a new control so you can use that tool to make sure that, uh, to essentially control which app, which app script applications can and cannot run in your organization. Essentially, uh, you can disable sp uh, specific APIs or products, and then, and then if you decide to do that, you just whitelist specific app script projects. Um, otherwise, they can't run. 
Additionally, we understand that if you're going to create enterprise-grade mission-critical applications, you need the ability to use professional workflows and professional development tools. So to that end, uh, in Q1 of, last, of this year, we launched CLASP, which is the command line interface for working with Git and your local IDE. And you can do everything you're seeing in the demo there, create projects, pull, push, clone, deploy, view logs. And this is actually an open source uh, project. Uh, so this has been uh, well received by a lot of our professional developers. Similarly, we launched TypeScript for uh, AppScript in Q2 of this year, which is going to introduce a number of new features into your local IDE, including autocomplete, structural typing, type inferences and interfaces, and ECMAScript 6 features. We're always looking for opportunities to expand the use cases that you can support with AppScript projects. And so to that end, we are excited to announce that today, for all business and enterprise uh, SKU users, we're lifting the cap from six minute maximum execution time up to 30 minutes. And so this is gonna mean that you're gonna be able to do uh, larger, uh, more complex uh, uh, scripts that can work on larger data sets. Additionally, we're working on a feature called flexible quotas, which is essentially going to eliminate hard daily quotas and replace them with a high, uh, a high cap rate limit, which will effectively eliminate quotas altogether for uh, all but the most extreme use cases. We're also working on AppScript V8. Uh, so this is the first time that we're announcing this, and it's a, a modernized and more performant runtime that's gonna run underneath AppScript. So it's gonna come with a number of significant features. First off, you're gonna be able to use modern JavaScript. So you're gonna be able to use ECMAScript 2017 with all the modern JavaScript features, including the ability to uh, run and use modern JavaScript libraries. We're expecting performance gains of 10x for CPU-bound executions, significant improvements in reliability so you can confidently run enterprise-grade applications, and we're also introducing a brand new feature along with AppScript V8 called the Job Service. And this is gonna take your especially long running processes and you're gonna be able to break them up into parallel processes that can fan out, making, meaning that your projects are gonna run faster and they're also going to be able to cover a lot more ground. Additionally, in Q1 2018, we launched a new product for AppScript called the AppScript Dashboard, and this satisfied a number of use cases. So first off, uh, previously, your AppScript projects might have been scattered around, hidden behind Google Sheets, Google Docs, maybe found in Google Drive. We brought them all in one place behind the AppScript Dashboard. We also introduced monitoring features for you to see usage data and graphs, error rates, and introduced uh, troubleshooting tools for e execution logs and stack driver logging. And today, I am very excited to announce that we are going to be relaunching the AppScript dashboard as the G Suite Developers Hub. And this is gonna have, uh, it's no longer just gonna be for AppScript, it's actually gonna be the launch pad for all your G Suite integrations, including AppMaker. Gonna come with a number of new features, including templates, so you can get your projects up and running faster, starred projects, so you can not only get quick access to your projects, but also see a portfolio overview of the projects you care about for monitoring. And we're also introducing trigger management, which is gonna give you the ability to debug triggers, manage triggers, including, uh, including notifications. So with that, I'm actually excited to show you guys a demo of the new G Suite Developer Hub. Great, so first off, this is the homepage of the Developer Hub. You can see um, I've got all my projects in one place. If I click on the Getting Started link over here on the left, I'm gonna be able to see I have quick access to a number of resources. I also have a variety of templates for add-ons, for app maker web apps, for a, Google, for a chat bot. Uh, in this case, I actually want to check out a specific project. I'm gonna go back to my projects. I'm gonna check out customer issues. This is a project that I personally work on. And since I work on this project pretty uh, frequently, I wanna make sure that it's starred. It looks like it already has a star here. So I'm gonna be able to go over into starred projects on the left. And I'm gonna be able to see all my starred projects in one place. Um, in addition to the starred projects and quick access, I'm actually gonna be able to see a roll-up summary of all the data associated with my portfolio of projects. So here's customer issues, and here's the roll-up summary. There, across all my projects, I have 7,800 users, 29,000 executions, and um, I can see here that there's actually a spike in the error rate of uh, my customer issues graph. So why don't we dive in and take a look at that. So now we get to the project details page of the customer issues app. I see all the same data, error rate, executions, users. I get my familiar graphs. I also see the OAuth scopes associated with the project as, long as, as well as the metadata on the right-hand side. 
Um, I've got a number of different uh, quick access links like Stack Driver and Cloud Project. And I can also see all the different deployments for my projects up at the top in this tabbed interface. So in this case, I'm seeing my error rate spike on July 19th. And uh, I want to go ahead and take a look at the executions associated with this project so I can debug that project. So I'm going to go ahead and go to executions, status, failed executions. I see here my executions associated with July 19th. Uh, this is a time driven. This is fired by a time driven, driven trigger. So I can actually pivot over to view the trigger that was responsible for firing this execution. And then from there, I can pivot to see all the failed executions associated with this specific trigger, so I can debug it. And then with one click, I can actually load up the, uh, the stack driver logs for this specific execution. And uh, I'm going to be able to see that in this case, uh, this failure was caused by an ex external, data, uh, external database quota was exhausted. So uh, if we can go back to the, uh, the slide deck. Essentially, today, um, we have covered um, Record macros and how they can save you time when you're working in Google Sheets. Uh, Stephanie gave an excellent overview of Apps Script and how it can be used to save development time, cost, increase productivity, and spark innovation in the organization. Uh, we got, showed you six different use cases of Apps Script in action, and we covered 16 new features that we uh, have improved over the last six uh, over the last 12 months, as well as the new uh, launch of the G Suite dashboard. So thank you so much for your time, and we are excited to have you uh, have you as users of Apps Script.